Hey YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines and today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of settings I think that are super important when you're working with wedding or event photography. So hey YouTubers, listen, uh, I have had the X-T3 for about six months now. I am really enjoying it. I love the camera. I think it's great. I have done quite a few events these days. What do I mean by events? I mean wedding photography, uh, show photography, and those type of things. So today I'm just going to go through some of the settings that I use and I think are important. Now there are other settings in there, but for me, I'm just going to talk about the ones I deem super important when I actually go out and shoot. A couple of things to bear in mind. I use the Fuji X-T3 with the 50 to 140 f 2.8 lens. I also have a B cam, which I put a fixed focal 56 millimeter on. That's how I work when I work. And the last thing I wanted to say is that I do not use a flash. So here we go. Let's go into uh, the menu itself. Now we're inside the X-T3. Uh, now, the first thing I want to tell you guys is that I'm going to go right into the menu. And we're going to go right up at the top at image quality, right off the bat. Okay. My image size is a large and 3.2. Image quality is fine plus raw. The reason why I use fine is simply because I believe that the client sometimes wants to get an image quickly. And it happens a lot. That possibility that the client needs an image very quickly is always there. Therefore, I always record a JPEG plus a RAW. Now, you can decide what size you want that JPEG to be. It can be really small just so that the person can see what the shot is. But I keep it in high quality JPEG anyway. My recording is compressed. I have not found any difference between uncompressed and lossless compressed. Therefore, I do leave it on compressed. My film simulation, which becomes important if I do have to send JPEGs to the client, I personally put it on pro negative high. Now, another thing I think really important uh, when you go into image uh, quality settings is select custom settings and edit save custom settings. Now, once we are done all our settings, I deem it super important. Define that group of settings and make that group of settings associated with one type of photography. And in your edit, save custom settings, go and save all those settings under one custom preset. It'll save you a lot of time later on. And the less you think, the more time and the more concentration goes on your photography. Now let's go into autofocus. Uh, this area right here, the biggest things that I find really important to make sure are set uh, AF mode you don't really have to set unless you because you do have the dial at the top here where you can set your AF mode AFC custom settings I just want to tell you guys that for me I personally find that using number two ignore obstacles and continue to track subject to me has done the best job possible it's really it, it follows where I want to go when I do use autofocus uh, store AF mode by orientation, I do not use, but apparently it seems pretty good. What it does is it changes the autofocus mode depending on the orientation of your camera. If you're in portrait mode, it's going to change the AF mode to a different AF mode. Uh, AF point display is on. Oh yes, here's what I also wanted to mention this. Number of focus points. You can go for 117 or 425. I tell, I personally like to put mine at 117. Now, if you put it at 425, you get a lot more focus points, but you still cover the same amount of the frame. Now, let's say if I go into 117, I just want to show you guys all the focus points. As you can see, they fill the frame. Now, let's go back into here and go back up to number of focus points. And if I put it at 425 and I press, there are a lot more focus points, but you're covering about the same amount of the frame. It's just that you have a lot more focus points to go for. If you are doing macro photography, I would definitely encourage you to go for 425 focus points. You can go in and get that very specific point you want. 
Remember that always on the dial, you can take this dial and roll it out and open and redefine the size of your focus point as well. And you can also do that within, oh, one minute. Ah, you can also do that within your 117 focus points. So if you're in 117 focus points, you can roll the dial, open up the size of what you want to focus in on and move your focus points around. Therefore, it is up to you. Personally, I like to leave the focus points on 117. I don't find that much of a difference. So don't get too excited about the fact that there's 425. You might be fine with the 117 and it takes away a lot of the confusion when there's a whole slew of points there. Pre-AF is also a nice uh, little addition. What it does is that it constantly tries to focus in on the subject while you're taking the shot. What I suggest to a lot of people is that if you're in pre-AF, pre -AF, make sure you have a lot of extra batteries around. Pre-AF eats up a lot of energy and it takes a lot of battery power. However, I have found a noticeable difference when I am pre-AF. I nail my focus a lot more. So put that pre-AF on, but make sure you have a ton of batteries. Let's go down here, AF illuminator, face eye detection setting. Now, right now it is on off. When I put face dot eye detection on on, I get a choice of off auto, right eye priority and left eye priority. Personally, when you're doing an event, leave it on auto people. Do not put it on right eye priority or left eye. Right eye and left eye priority is something you want to use when you're doing portraits and you want to be specific, but you don't want to be choosing eyes when you're at an event and you want to get the, the couple and you want to make sure the bride is in focus. Just leave it on eye auto. You're going to be fine with that. Uh, auto focus plus manual focus, uh, manual focus assist. Yes, I wanted to talk a bit about manual focus assist. I leave this on peaking, focus peaking. Most of you people know what it is, but what it is is basically uh, when you are in manual focus, the camera, you know, try to get this in manual focus. The camera will actually outline the parts of the image that are in focus in blue. And it really helps you a lot when you're in a low light situation. I find focus peaking is one of the best ways to get the right focus that you want. Now, if you can see right here, I'm out of focus. As I focus in on my stuff, the focus, there's a little outline that occurs around the thing that is in focus. That is what is called focus peaking. So I personally think that if you are in manual focus, you might want to use the focus peaking like that. It is the best thing to use. I would definitely tell anybody to use that. Focus check, I do not use. I do not use. Focus check basically magnifies the area upon which you are focusing in manual. Uh, it adds to confusion. I just don't like using it. I, Panasonic is a big fan of that as well. And I never did like it, never really used it a lot. Uh, other points in here, uh, touch screen mode. Uh, on my touch screen mode, most of the time I leave it on off when I'm doing events. Unfortunately, I have a greasy nose and there's something about my nose that just makes the touch screen go off all the time. Therefore, I leave it on off and I use my joystick to get my focus points. I don't like to use my finger to find focus points. I just think the best thing to do is to leave touch screen mode at off, especially in Fuji. In Canon, it might be a different story, but for Fuji, that's the way I see it. Okay. Uh, now, drive settings. Yes, I did want to mention a couple of things. In your drive settings, your high speed burst is, I put it at eight frames. I don't want to force my camera too much. Low speed burst, I wanted to talk a bit about. Now, you have choices here. The tendency and the temptation is probably to go for a high uh, low speed burst burst i would personally ask you guys to go for the lowest possible so make sure your burst is at four or three why do i say that i think it's important to make sure that there is a difference between your high speed burst and your low speed so that when you choose it on the dial there's a noticeable difference you will want to have your burst a bit slower because for triage and stuff like that if you need the high speed switch your High, your switch to high speed and then go for it and get as many shots as you want if you really want to capture the moment. Uh, 
I personally have found it very useful to have my low speed burst at a very low setting. Uh, sports finder mode, that's the subject of another video completely. I will talk about sports finder mode. It is great. It might be something you might want to use when there's really fast moving subjects. Uh, it is a really cool thing that Fuji has developed and I think is really great, but it definitely deserves its own video. Um, I will not go into, yes, shutter type. Uh, now I have my shutter type on mechanical shutter. You might want to choose electronic shutter if you have to be extremely silent. Let's say the bride and groom walk up to you and say, listen, we, want, we don't want to hear you. you. We want you to be invisible during uh, our wedding. You can put this on electronic shutter. When you do put it on electronic shutter, there is no mechanical shutter opening and closing in front of the sensor. Therefore, you do not hear anything. So it is a cool mode to have there. Let's go into user setting. Now, the first thing I'm going to go into my user setting is right to here, sound setup, because we were just talking about sound before. Now, if you want to be silent, you might want to go and change the volumes on this. If the bride and groom tell you we got to be silent, you might want to change AF beep volume so that when you're when you come in focus and it's super quiet, people in the place don't hear dee -deep, dee -deep, dee -deep, all the time. Uh, self beep timer same thing operation volume shutter volume uh, you might want to put that at zero and you will get a comp if you put that the sound down and you have electronic shutter you will have a very silent camera and it is a bonus that's one of the big bonuses about mirrorless cameras in general so now i want to go into save data setup as most of you do know if you are an owner of a fujifilm xt3 you have dual card slots. Dual card slots, why are they important? Well, you're about to find out. When we go into save data setup on the Fujifilm X-T3, when we go down to card slot setting, still image, there are three options. You have two cards that you can save to. Now you can use the RAW plus JPEG, which is basically telling the camera, save RAW on one card and JPEG on the other. Sequential backup, what you're essentially telling the camera to do is that you want the camera to fill up one card. Once that card is filled, go to the other card and fill it up. That might be useful if you have to, uh, uh, you have a lot of data to put in and you want to make sure you don't have to change cards out. I would not go for that setting either. The setting that is the most important and I think is great for everybody is the backup setting. What backup does is it basically saves to one card and simultaneously saves to the other. Meaning that if you have a card failure, you have another card with everything that you just shot. There's nothing more catastrophic than shooting a full event, coming home and realizing that your card just screwed up. That's what's also great about the X-T3 is that you have those two cards, you can put them on backup. For events and wedding, that is the only setting you do for your saved data setup. You put it on backup. I just want to talk really quick about the whole My Menu settings. I have a video on how to define your My Menu settings. It is extremely important that you learn this, guys, because the My Menu settings is basically all the settings that you go to the most on your camera. My Menu settings, function button definition, and... The last one is the custom, custom settings up here. They are extremely important. People, you're going to have to learn that stuff. It is super important. Edit, save, custom settings. I will have videos on those to explain them. But there you go. That is briefly how I see the whole wedding and event photography settings. Now, these are the most important. If I've overlooked some, guys, mention below. Tell me what you think. Let's talk about it. Tell me some of the settings that you use when you're doing event photography, what you find more practical when using the X-T3. You guys, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.